What you see on your screen at this time is a reminder that this advisor webcast is intended for informational purposes only. Any features or functionality described for Oracle's products remains at the sole discretion of Oracle. Now, let's get started with our presentation. Way, if you're ready, I'll turn the webcast over to you and you can begin. Uh, thank you, Pam. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Wei Shong. I work at uh, Oracle Testing Support uh, for our active uh, supported division. And today we're going to talk about um, Seaboard 2's performance issue. Uh, it, we're not going to talk about the um, Seaboard application uh, performance issue because that's a much bigger topic. Uh, we are mostly concerned today about the developer, uh, the tool's performance issue. Some of the behaviors uh, we see from the customer, like uh, SRs or like customer complaints, some of them is listed like, uh, for example, uh, when you comply uh, for SRF, it takes a few hours. Averagely, uh, if it's uh, a full compliance, we will say it takes average about an hour. So if you see your com comply compilation take about uh, three hours or four hours, that's uh, definitely a performance issue. Another example is um, the repository compile just has there and never finish. And, um, you don't get any error message from the user interface. Another thing uh, we see a lot is that developers spend a lot of time performing full get. Eventually, uh, you, you, you get a full get when you start to work on your project, uh, probably at the, at the beginning. Uh, it takes um, eventually about uh, three hours to get the full get. But uh, we see like uh, users complain about spending like um, more than a whole day or even like um, a couple of days to get full get. That's definitely a performance issue. And also checking and check out. Uh, checking and check out, uh, it really depends on how large your object is. Um, but if you just doing a checking and check out or take hours, then it's a performance issue. Applying extension, doing the data schema change. A lot of times you will see like you cannot finish the schema change. When you apply the extension table to your base table, you will see your SQL tools crash. That's definitely a tools uh, performance issue. And also the, when you activ uh, activating local database, SQL tools just hands. Those are some examples of the SQL uh, tools uh, performance issues. Um, there are a variety of like other things. Uh, stem from the, the root cause of the tools performance issues. Some of the some of the things we have to do before we start even troubleshooting the the performance issue for tools. Uh, one thing you you have to do is to set up log file uh, from the client side. Uh, the SQL log event environment uh, will create a SQL dev log file in the SQL tools log directory. These log files were including um, the SQL statements, uh, the timings, and the timestamps. So we know that uh, you can send the um, log events uh, between zero and the five. A zero, of course, is like there's no log, and the five is the highest level of the log. But we know as as we troubleshooting the performance issue, we recommend you. Um, at least send it to three or higher so that uh, we will get uh, enough information. When you uh, review the SIP dev log file, um, you, what you're looking for is uh, the small SQL timings and the uh, large gap between time steps. And um, there is a bookshelf like for the whole chapter is, uh, about how to set the client side logging. And we're not going to talk, talk uh, a lot about the, how to set this uh, web client logging. But uh, definitely before you start to troubleshooting uh, performance issues, this is uh, one of the things you have to do. There's uh, some other tools. Another tool is environment verification tool. This is used to verify that um, all the configuration settings are correct and uh, it's uh, in complying with the SIBO system requirement and the supported platform for the version we're using. Um, it is very important to verify that the environment 
you are using is meeting the requirement, the recommended system requirements. Also, we're not going to talk about the, in detail about this tool. Uh, there's a, a document ID 4771051 about how to use this tool, how to get this tool. And so before you even start to troubleshooting performance issues, you have to make sure um, your settings and uh, the other like things like Windows operating system, the database is in, in compliance with our supported platform. Another big thing we noticed recently is like uh, a lot of the problem is due to the third party software. I would say about um, one third of the SRs we we see is is due to this problem. Um, this problem pretty much is due to the antivirus scan. Like uh, those software, they sometimes they use a lot of um, CPU and uh, uh, they just have the memory conflict with uh, with the CPU files. And um, so if you are using uh, the antivirus scanning in the same machine as you are doing the SIBO development work, we are going to recommend it. You must uh, exclude like uh, all the SIBO SIF files, the SIBO BMS date file, and all the files in the bin folder of the SIBO um, to be in the exclusion list from any antivirus scan. Uh, a good news is the latest version, like um, McAfee dead files, is kind of like a simple patch, like um, 4323, fix the manual performance conflict with uh, with the simple tools. So if you if you cannot uh, change any setting of the um, of your antivirus scan, I would recommend you talk with your like um, uh, IT people to try to apply that uh, patch so that uh, we are sure that uh, your third-party antivirus is not going to impact your CO2 performance. Um, another big uh, root cause of the development performance of the network. Uh, we know a lot of people, uh, they work remote, they use VPN. Um, so one of the things you have to check, uh, um, when the developers have the performance issue, are they working connected with the VPN? If, they, if the other developers are connecting directly to the server, do they also have the problem? Uh, if only the individuals on the VPN have the performance issue, it's, it's very possible it's due to the VPN network connection. And also, if you change the like uh, where you are working, like uh, which network you're connecting to, does it affect uh, the speed of the your project work? Uh, are all the users experience the bad performance in the same subnet? And also, is the performance problem is uh, very depend on when you are doing your work? For example, if you're doing the peak uh, uh, time, like uh, during the daytime, it's, it's really slow. And But when you do it like um, early in the morning or late in the afternoon, it, it, it seems much quicker, then it's very possible that's the network problem. Uh, we, can, we can try using the SQL map tracing to see how your network performance is. Uh, if you suspect that the network is a possible cause, uh, most likely you have to work with your uh, network administrator uh, to do a network tracing or monitoring. Um, sometimes uh, we see like um, CBO tools performance downgradation can occur with as little as like 50% of the network utilization. Uh, there's a CBO tools uh, called the uh, SIBO application response measure tool. Um, if you don't know um, much about that tool, you can go to search on uh, the web, uh, like uh, internal like support site, like the SIBO internal support site, and it's 
keyboard. It's called S A R M, S A R M, and uh, you can download from the uh, Oracle support web. And also, uh, there's a full description description of how to use it. Um, you can work work with your network uh, as administrator to see if your your network performance is how how it compare with the benchmark. Uh, you can also make sure the, uh, the optimization level is set in network asset in the control panel in your, depending on what kind of operating system you are using. And for the network problem, there's not really much we can do from the CBO side. You have to, like, update your physical network to a high bandwidth uh, or, like, segment, segment in the segment, the network. Uh, something we can su suggest from the CBO side is, is, for example, if you really have the um, network problem, for example, when you check in or check out your project, you can do it like um, make the project like uh, not so so big, like uh, or when you do the combination, you do it like not a full compile, just to do incremental compile so that. Uh, the, the project, the, the work is not such a huge project, and it may take less, less time. But uh, basically, you have to improve your network to improve the performance of the single tools environment. Another root cause is uh, it can be database specific. Um, if your tools performance issue is only happening when you are connecting to one of the database. It doesn't, for example, if it only happens when you're connecting to server database, but when you're connecting to your local database, it works very, uh, it work, works great, it doesn't have any trouble, then uh, probably it's database specific. And another thing is that um, if, the, if uh, when you're connecting to the server database, it's just a developing environment, or it happened to only testing environment. If only happened to one environment, uh, it, there's a good chance that it may be database related. Uh, you need to check with your DBA to see uh, if the database server statistics, statistics showing the high CPU utilization. Um, Maybe you have to ask the DBA, has the statistics been updated recently? If the performance issue is specific to one database, uh, we suggest you uh, check the log files to see that, uh, to compare with the one, the log file that uh, has no problem, to see where is um, like the slowness, or which point is start to hand, then probably uh, that way, we can pinpoint like um, what's the problem of the slowness in that specific database. Uh, there are some settings in the like uh, database side. For example, if the, if your database is set up as a cluster-based optimization, we recommend the change to uh, rule-based optimization uh, because uh, rule-based Optimization is much helpful for the CBO tools performance. Another thing is the index. Uh, you have to check with your DBA to see if all the standard index, index are there. Uh, like uh, there's no corruption. When you do the like uh, CBO tools development at the beginning, a lot of a lot of times. Um, the, the repository uh, imported from the outside source from your previous project. And uh, we notice when you do that, uh, there is a uh, chance of the standard index get corrupted. Uh, so you have to check with your DBA to see that um, all the index are current. If you see uh, the if you see the difference of the performance between different databases, you have to check if they have the same index. If uh, the performance issue only happens to one that um, has the customization index, 
you have to check that index uh, has been updated. A lot of times uh, you have to ask the DBA to uh, recreate the index when you start uh, a new project. Um, that's, that, that way we, we are sure that um, the standard index and uh, all your configuration have no corruption. Another thing is um, for the repository, if the stable tools performance only happens with uh, one specific repository, um, you have to check if it is just recently moved to that database or there uh, have been a lot of changes to that repository. Um, a lot of times we see like uh, people just uh, physically remove your one repository to another machine and uh, because the, the migration process doesn't work smoothly, we, we see a performance issue when, when you start to get the repository, work on that new repository in the new machine. Does the database have many repositories? A large number of repositories in the simple data tables can slow down local and server compliance. Uh, you have to type in compile in local or server database with a few repositories in the single tables. For example, uh, when you're trying to compile a new SRS from the production database, usually you only have one production repository. Uh, but when you do the testing or in your like uh, like uh, testing environment, you may have uh, multiple like repositories. Multiple repositories can really downgrade you a simple tool's performance. And if there's some repository you're no longer using, uh, we recommend that you just um, archive it and um, uh, using simple tools to, to delete it. There is a big uh, performance uh, like uh, cost for multiple repositories. Uh, if you don't know like how many repositories you have in the, in your development systems, you can do a run the following as a QR to check the number of the repository in your database. That's um, select account star from S repository. And uh, delete, deleting repository you have to be really careful. You cannot um, deleting simple repository directly from the database. Uh, you have to first archive it and then uh, delete the repository, repository by the simple tools. Also, we suggest you not to do any deleting repository when there's a lot of activities going on in the development. Uh, because deleting repository can take a very long time to perform and uh, it's very uh, database intensive. So you have to delete uh, the depository either before you start to work on a project or when there's a downtime uh, doing the project development. Another root cause is um, SQL Server. Um, SQL Server, if you are running out of resources, and um, you can check if you can restart the server. And then uh, a lot of times it's like a, the, the thing like this, uh, we, never, we never check, you know. So uh, we recommend if you have the SQL tools performance issue, um, try to, if you're connecting to a server database, ask the administrator to just restart the SQL server at night and then see next day um, if you still have the same performance issue or not. Another thing is you have to um, test in the connecting of the ODBC. Um, ODBC, like uh, setting, can really uh, cause performance issues. But when you go to config on the ODBC settings, you go to the um, start program administrator tools, the data source, and then uh, you can test the connections. 
for for Oracle database, you have to make sure, for example, uh, the ODBC setting in the Siebel tools and the Siebel servers is done the same way as uh, instructed by the in the bookshelf. The packet size has to be zero. Uh, the enable scrollable cursors have to be zero. The uh, comments as car has to be one. Uh, common size as character has to be one. All those uh, settings are very, uh, you have to set the, the way it is so that uh, you won't have the performance problem. Because if you set in as other numbers, you might still have the OBDC connecting, but um, uh, it will downgrade your performance. We also don't uh, recommend you have the OBDC tracing on because uh, when you do that, it's a big cost for the for the Siebel tools. Um, turn off the ODB situation if if you if you have a, a Siebel tools uh, performance problem. This can be done when you do go to the ODB data source administrator tracing tab. But remember, after you turn off your ODB tracing you have to restart your single tools. And um, that way, you are really, you are really seeing the effect of the tracing, ODBC tracing tools off. Another thing is, uh, we see a lot is um, the single server, the single tools are not on the same patch level. Many times it will work, uh, for example, if you're using 8.1.1 in your server, but you are upgrading your tools to 8.1.2, it will work, but it's still, a lot of times, uh, you will see there will be a performance downgrade if the patch level is not the same. Of course, when you do that um, uh, EVT verification, they will tell you, uh, your server and, the, and the, a client is not on the same patch level. So uh, that's another thing. There are some more also product defects that um, in fact uh, simple tools performance. But for those kind of defects, it's just uh, like uh, either version specific or like uh, only happened in a very specific area. Um, it's not a system wide, so you, for most of you guys, it won't apply to your development. Mm. For example, recently in the new version, uh, not, not the new version, the, the first version of Symbol 2.8, mm, we introduced a new functionality, the ST, the strongly typed uh, eScript engine. Um, that's a new, very new functionality just introduced in Siebel version 8. Um, when they enable that um, STE script engine, that will do a lot of the syntax checking and also uh, will do the like, uh, autom like autom automatic checking for you when you're using this e scripting. But we notice that when the Siebel tools comply, uh, when you have a lot of e-scripting, it uh, in fact will perform us greatly. And um, after working with engineers, we find that it is a product defect. So we have to, uh, you have to actually disable that STE scripting engine to actually comply when you have a lot of e-scripting. So for that product defect, it is fixed in Siebel tools 8.1. Uh, but if you are still using 8.0, this problem is still there. And uh, because they need to have a, a big code change, so they don't have the patch or anything to fix it in Siebel 8.0. Uh, another another product defect, for example, is um, in Siebel 7.5. Uh, well, if you're using Microsoft SQL Server, uh, they have a kind of conflict with the um, Unicode database with the Siebel 2.7.5. And um, 
you will see a performance downgrade. And um, this is also fixed in symbol 7.7. But for 7.5 users, if you are using Microsoft SQL Server, you don't have a patch. And um, right now, um, because we are already no longer uh, doing the patch for the symbol 7.5, so the only way for you to work around it is uh, to upgrade it to symbol 77. So we are, we are, this is mostly uh, some of the root cause of the symbol 2's performance issue. And um, a lot of times uh, the symbol 2's uh, performance issues happen to one individual user. Uh, in that kind of cases, um, that individual has to check his machine, like a client machine, actually, to see if uh, he has the enough memory, enough memory to do the, uh, the project development work. Mm -hmm. And also, if his, his network connection or his uh, connecting to the main database is uh, smoothly. Some, there are some very good uh, reference files in, uh, in solving the simple tools performance issues. Uh, the first one I have to recommend is uh, there's a master node uh, in the support web. That master node is uh, just specifically for the troubleshooting the, the tools performance problem. And the doc ID is 1320321.1, and it's uh, just updated this summer, so it contains a lot of um, uh, new information applied only to CBO uh, 8.0 and CBO 8.1. Um, so that's, that's one of the first things I recommended to you guys. And uh, another one is um, best practice for application configuration deployment in Civil 7.7 and 7.8. Uh, we are in the process right now to update that, uh, that document to reflect a lot of changes in, in Civil 8. Uh, most of the information in this uh, Drug parking will apply to CBO 8, but now we are going to add some new information to, to this uh, document so that it reflects some changes in the CBO 8 version. But that's another good one uh, out there. So that document ID is um, 54699.1. And um, specifically for Oracle database, we have a tooling guide. Um, this is only for Oracle database, and it applies to the CBO8, and also uh, they have uh, two different CBO versions, like CBO7.7, CBO.7.8, CBO8, different uh, like um, suggestions. That's like performance tuning guidelines for CBO application Oracle database. So that's a good one too. And also, uh, for the, we have a specific team in the configuration and um, CBO configuration team handle the performances. Uh, uh, so, if you are, if you have a trouble like uh, with your performance issues, organize ours. Uh, it will handled by um, area expert. Um, another thing, if if your issue didn't get resolved in the support. Another very good uh, resource is um, uh, Expert Service. Expert Service, they offer the configuration review, and uh, that's very good for performance planning for problem. Because performance issues, a lot of the times, it's like um, you can hardly um, find the root cause, and it can be in a lot of the different small things. So if you have a thorough configuration uh, review from the actual service, that will be very helpful, not from only from the development point, but from for the future configuration. Uh, so if you just start your configuration, and um, probably you have to get uh, familiar with the roadmap. Uh, there's a roadmap uh, guidance file also on the support web, uh, suggesting what's the best practice of doing the configuration. So always sticking to the right practice, that will help you prevent a lot of the CBO2's performance issues. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to open our line for the uh, question and answers. Okay, thank you, Wade. We hope everyone found the presentation valuable today. We'll open our Q&A in just a moment, so please use the chat feature or the phone lines at this time to let us know you have a question. Martina, could you give instructions once again for those on the phone lines? Yes, at this time, I'd like to remind everyone, in order to ask you questions, press star and number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause this for a moment to compile the Q&A roster. Okay, and while we're pausing, I want to remind everyone of a couple of things. The first is, in the next 48 hours, I will be sending a PDF of this presentation along with the download and streaming link to all of those who have enrolled. So if you go out to our current list of webcasts that are being offered and you see one that is, that is of interest to you but it, that you have a calendar conflict, just go ahead and enroll for it anyway because then you'll be getting pushed the PDF and the download and streaming links within 48 hours. Also, I will be I will be posting uh, this presentation on my Oracle support under my Oracle support training central, and then you would click on recorded training. If you're more comfortable using doc numbers, it will be posted on doc number 740-964.1. Again, that's 740-964.1. And that will be out there in the next 48 hours also. The third thing I want to remind you of is if you think of a question after we end today, just go ahead and respond to that email from me with the PDF and the download and streaming link, and I will forward it on to Wade Answer on a one-off basis. So with all those things said, I know uh, it takes a couple of minutes to find the features that we talked about and formulate the question that's the most appropriate to ask. Um, I'll ask Martina. Martina, do you have any questions from your audience? Not at this time. Okay, and I'm not seeing any questions on the chat feature. But I, like I said, I always want to try to give you enough time to um, formulate those questions. Okay, well, we do have a question here. What is the best way to apply index on a column through tools or directly to the database? So uh, exactly you have to do it through tools, uh, um, directly through database uh, is uh, uh, from the data, DBA point of view, it may be like uh, more like uh, convenient, but from the civil point of view, we recommend it to do it through civil tools. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing any additional questions, but like I said, I always try to give you enough time. I know a lot of times our attendees, We'll be in a conference room together, and it'll take a minute or two to uh, decide what question is the most appropriate to ask. So, again, Martina, any questions from your audience? No, not at this time. Okay. And just remember, if you do think of a question after we end today, please respond to that email from me with the PDF and the download and streaming links, and I'll forward it on to Wade to answer on a one-off basis. So I want to thank Way and thank everyone for joining today's Oracle Advisor webcast. We hope you found this webcast valuable, and we look forward to you joining us again. Please enjoy the remainder of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect.